So, in this diagram, you can see the in the x-axis, there is a time of starvation and the rate of glucose used in the y-axis. So, at the zero hour, you are taking the dietary glucose. That means you are eating food in the morning or lunch or during the dinner. So, that is the time when we are eating. So, the glucose level is very high here. The blue line shows the exogenous dietary glucose which you are eating. So, this comes down within a 6 hours period. Within 6 hours, it drops down. So, what happens when you do not eat within this period, your liver glycogen comes into play. So, you can see a green shadow here. So, this is what the liver glycogen role. So, when the exogenous dietary glucose is utilized in your body, when the curve drops down, the liver glycogen comes into play and it starts rising. Because the liver glycogen store means it gives glucose to your body. The glycogen store depletes and gives glucose to your body and maintains the blood glucose level. Once the liver glycogen is also depleted, how you will get your glucose? This is where the gluconeogis comes into play. Here you can see a violet graph here. This one. So, gluconeogenesis, it occurs post absorptive state that is mainly 8 hours post absorptive states. So, if you do not eat even after 8 to 12 hours your gluconeogenesis starts. That is how we get our glucose to our body and by which the glucose level is maintained in the body. So, now we will see which organ synthesizes glucose. It is mainly seen in liver. 90 percentage of the gluconeogenesis takes place in liver. So, organs which helps in gluconeogenesis means it is mainly liver, 90 percentage. Whereas, in the intestinal cells and kidney, it is 10 percentage. W uh, you can ask me one thing. Most of the time, the exercising muscle needs glucose. Then why it is not happening in the exercising muscle? Th that also having mitochondria, everything. Then why it is not happening in the skeletal muscles? It is happening in the liver. This is because one enzyme required for gluconeogenesis is absent in the muscle, whereas it is present in the liver. That is why 90 percentage of the gluconeogenesis takes place in the liver. In the liver also, it occurs in both the compartments, both in the cytoplasm as well as in the mitochondria. So, it occurs both in cytoplasm as well as in the mitochondria. So, what is the source of gluconeogenesis? The second thing we have to see, we have seen the organs where it is taking place. Now, we have to concentrate what is the source for gluconeogenesis because we know we, we are not taking food. So, it is happening during fasting and starvation. So, there is no glucose, no carbohydrates. So, this has to be supplied from your non-carbohydrate friends, non-carbohydrate sources, which is your non-carbohydrate friends lipids and proteins. So, the source is from lipids and proteins. So, next we are seeing sources. So, the sources are first thing it is lactate. They are the non-carbohydrate sources. Second one is glycerol. Third one is alanine. Then you can ask me this is an energy consuming process. So, you have to supply energy. We have given the sources. Then who is going to give the energy? Energy. So, if you take the triacylglycerol in adipose tissues. In adipose tissues, if you take triacylglycerol, it is broken down to glycerol, which is going to help for the sources. And next one, glycerol and fatty acids. This fatty acid is going to be oxidized. So, which 
on oxidation provides energy provides atp on oxidation so this atp it is utilized for your gluconeogenesis so sources are lactate glycerol glycerol and alanine and energy is provided by your fatty acid oxidation so you can see a diagram here this is nothing but your glycolysis step so this is your glycolysis so glucose is giving pyruvate here so you can ask me i can revert the pyruvate to glucose it is very easy but there are checkpoints during this reactions i can i cannot revert the pyruvate to glucose because there are some irreversible reactions which cannot be revert back so they are nothing but your exokinase step phosphofructokinase step and last one pyruvate kinase so there are three kinase enzymes what are they hexokinase phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase which are the irreversible steps in glycolysis so i cannot revert the steps in the while revert backing the pyruvate to glucose so i need four enzymes to bypass this checkpoints so i need four enzymes only there are three reactions but i need four enzymes to bypass this three reactions what are they 